everybody and welcome back to adobe live or if you've never been before then welcome to adobe live now if you're watching here on youtube then you can of course that's perfectly all right but you can't get involved there with the chat so what you should do is pop across and join us on behance.net slash adobe live that way you can get involved with the community in the chat and ask questions which will come across to our fab guests today who are Katie and Abel from uh, Kabatha Batata. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Hi. Hey, Danny. Really good. Yeah. Good. Great to see you. So we'll chat to you uh, in just a moment or two. Let me just say hello to a few of our regulars. We get so many regular people on here. It's really surprising. Uh, it's fantastic as well. So we've got Gareth. Hi, Gareth. Uh, we've got Julia. Hi, Julia. Julia is my friend and also uh, the host of the German streams with us today. Uh, Stuart's with us. Kirsty, regular every day since day one. I think Angus is with us. Uh, we've got let's see caroline's here we've got sanjana we've got kirsty oh i said kirsty already so you're in kirsty you're in twice there you go uh catherine as well sean sean joins us from germany uh two uh, and probably in here steve who actually joins us from new zealand when he gets here which is incredible uh, andreas is here good and tag andreas brilliant so yeah we've got plenty in oh there's steve is there so fantastic that's really good so you guys, for people who've never heard of you or met you before, who are you and what do you do? Well, uh, we are Kavetha Patata and we're a design studio. We do characters, um, illustration and animation. Yeah, like we've been running our studio now for two and a half years. Uh, it started a bit as an experiment and then quickly started getting bigger and bigger. It's been now like two full, full years of like us uh, fully putting all our time into this project. Uh, this is all we do now. And the thing started growing. We got more and more clients. So we've done a lot of different work, uh, both in animation and also illustration and stuff, which is great because it's a bit faster. Uh, so it doesn't, doesn't require as much time. That's brilliant. I'm sure everybody's going to love it. I, I really love looking at your work. And Tim uh, is going to go ahead and pop uh, links through to your Instagram and everything through the chat as we go along. But th the building you're in right now, this is your brand new place, right? This is just like yeah, literally just finished. Is the paint still wet? Brand new. Yeah, it smells <laughs> a lot like paint. Yeah, like paint. <laughs> you got to be careful where you sit down. Yeah. yeah. If you see us feeling a bit fainty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, hopefully not. <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is a bit of a a dream of us having the space uh we were we've been jumping from place to place uh katie's from the uk and from spain uh this space is in barcelona but it has another thing that we really wanted to have is a gallery on the front so we are on the street level uh in the gracia neighborhood of barcelona and we're going to be able to exhibit pieces uh so that's that, that's what we wanted to, to do from the beginning being able to do like combine working on the computer but also working with physical stuff, making augmented reality pieces, making sculptures, yeah. and we're going to be able to show them. Like, yeah, we have already hung a few of our pieces. I think you can see just above the bell's head. Yeah, you can see some hanging pieces. stuff there. Yeah, we're kind of slowly filling it up with things. Yeah, but the front Fantastic. is going to be a gallery full of our stuff. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to visit next time in Barcelona. I'll definitely be, be popping by, so fantastic, yeah. So I think uh, you've got some stuff to show us today. I think you're going to show us some uh, practical stuff, but you've also got some things to get people into what you do and show a few examples of your stuff. That's about right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So shall we shall we get into that and start? Yeah. Yeah. yeah perfect. Okay. okay. So you want to show our stuff with our website, maybe? Yeah. Can... Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is... Uh, we, we are actually uh, being very efficient with our website. We have it connected to Adobe Portfolio. Uh, it's not like Adobe is, is sponsoring me saying it, but I would say <laughs> I, I, I like saying it because it's a really useful way of not spending all your life updating your website and you can focus on making nice projects, uh, organizing the projects, and then you can have it all synced so you don't need to do mm. things three times. So, yeah, we actually talked to a few small studios like ours that like a few in people but like to be really efficient in what you do yeah. and you don't want to spend your whole life using a million different social medias and yeah. things so yeah, yeah so we're quite simple with our approach uh 
you see our website is like the main page showing a bit of a video that to, to, to get the people a feeling of what we can do. And then we have our project section showing our projects. And inside each of these projects, there's a lot of information. There is a lot of stuff. And then we have an about section with a fun photo of us with a character uh, Fantastic. next to us. And then a bit of like information about clients we've been uh, working with and stuff we've been, we've been doing. Um, we can but show you the... Yep. This is all actually, so some of these these logos that you've got there, but this is all really quick, isn't it, right? How long's the studio been going? Yeah, as years. you were saying, just, just over two years. Two now, years. We kind you know, of made our first Cabeza Patata. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. super fast. Like, uh, we, we we both uh, were working before, uh, so we had experience. It's, it, it's not like we, we were uh, students and, and this happened. Uh, we were working on freelancing. I was freelancing in the motion design industry for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, Katie was um, more into, like, crafts and... Yeah, I, in an unlikely way, was actually doing uh, a lot of embroidery. I had yeah. my own em embroidery brand, which sounds very strange to jump from embroidery to 3D, but I think when you see some of our work, it kind of becomes clear. Maybe we could put one of yeah. my favourite recent projects that we made. Uh, is this perros, which is the dogs, uh, dogs in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, and you can see here, I think, a bit of how the craft comes into our 3D work as well. Yeah, in, on, each pro on each project, we always have quite a lot of text. And we we try to show a bit of behind the scenes. Uh, not not everything, but like sometimes I think probably we have some, you know, some stuff like showing how the 3D program works. Uh, even sometimes we have, I think towards the end, we have some sketches. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we have them here? Yeah. 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 Wow. So here you can see how, how all the process starts. Uh, we usually start with, with the sketches of what we want to do. And, and we like looking at references, both for like clothes and textures. And in, in this case, we are more looking at the dogs, but like we have sometimes <laughs> references in which we are very specific about the, the type of clothes we want to make. And as Kate is saying, there's a lot of like craft, even if it's digital, uh, we really mm. like looking at the materials and, and trying to get right with the materials. We think that that's what gives this feeling of, uh, we like, in general, we like thinking that if someone doesn't know about 3D, they couldn't even tell if these are real objects or these are 3D objects. Mm. That's, that's the challenge. That's very convincing, really, really mm. convincing. I'll tell you what I do love in that particular project as well is that you've got um, an artificial limb in there with with one of the creatures one of the one of the doggies there i was gonna say creatures then one of the doggies i, I couldn't remember i was, I was yeah. torn between saying perros and saying doggies <laughs> <laughs> i think my babel fish was malfunctioning but i think that's great because it's something that's that's often overlooked i think in uh, in forms of illustration unless they're specifically targeting people with you know with limbs so. yeah it's definitely what we we know like uh we we actually actively try to challenge ourselves to do it uh because as you are saying it's overlooked so we all have the tendency to to not to do it it's the natural thing and almost a as a quick like a, as a reminder every time we start a project we usually say okay how we are going to introduce uh, something that opens the, the illustrations, opens like well, who are we showing? I know it's it's all a bit absurd because right now we're having like dogs that look like humans, but if we are having dogs like look like humans, it might be some some dogs are missing one leg. So it's that's mm. that's the type of yeah. I think I it's like making it. these very yeah, making these very small changes in the way that you think. And when you're making a personal project, you can also really allow yourself to, to do that and not yeah. um, mm. maybe the client might have something specific that they want to represent and, and they don't want to have a certain anything in the project. Whereas when, mm. when you're doing it yourself, you can certainly do that. And we, of course you can challenge clients. We have this project, for example, in Loops, uh, we were having, trying to do the same challenge. This is a project in which we were uh, trying to do something uh, in which we were introducing our typical characters in a more realistic environment because we wanted to, to experiment how they will look with uh, these uh, shadows and these places that would, would look a bit darker than what we usually do. And in this project, we wanted to introduce someone on a wheelchair. Here you have this, nice. this character that is on a wheelchair. And it ended up influencing the entire image uh, because we started with these, with these steps and then when we introduced someone in the wheelchair, we thought like, oh, actually the, 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 this person, this character couldn't get to the top of the building. So we ended up making this lift. And then the entire building started taking shape 
through these decisions that we were making. Uh, here you can see. Yeah, and, and, and the end actually made a much more interesting image where you have a very straight uh, lift like that, which still has this elegance against this completely spiral staircase. And I think it added a lot more to it in the end and a new um, shadow on the side as well. It and does. Purely just from thinking a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think we, we always it suggest to people and invite people to, to, to do the same, to try to open the amount of things we are representing, because it's very typical to, to think, oh, there's nothing I can illustrate that hasn't been done before. And actually, I, I think it couldn't mm. be further from the truth, because yeah. we all tend to do the same thing. It's, it's good to challenge ourselves to do that. Now, and inclusivity is, is a big theme throughout your work, isn't it? It's, and it also, I think it's one of the, the things that's very, very dear to you and important to you, as you've, as you've already said in your work. And I think that's that's brilliant. Even when you're dealing with anthropomorphic things like the dogs and everything, I think it's yeah. great that you've managed to weave it in there really, really good. Mm. Yeah, and it will matter to a lot of people. You know, it's really good. Mm. For sure. Yeah. And uh, in, in other like type of projects we've been doing, uh, here you have a, a big uh, range of things from personal stuff to commercial. Uh, we try to put everything a bit on the same level, and with that, I mean that we always collect, even when we do personal pieces, we put them all together and make projects out of them. And it might sound a bit like, um, I don't know, like, it's, it's when you're starting, it sounds a bit fake that you are putting everything together on a project. Grandiose. A bit grandiose, <laughs> yeah, a bit like who you, you think you are putting a, a, a name and putting everything together. But we think it, it actually helps a lot to, to move on, to like put everything together, to get a style on a project, and then realize that is the moment to move on and, and try something different. So when we feel that we've done enough images for a project, we usually move to something else. Uh, do you have here, here, for example, an example of like us experimenting? Uh, this is was done, done uh, is something we did during the pandemic uh, when we were at home uh, in isolation. Like we decided to take photos of the things that we were doing on a daily uh, basis, you know, at home and make the 3D cards uh, being there instead of us. Mm -hmm. So this is us at home uh, doing some painting. This is us having a drink. Actually, I think you have hey. the real photo here. <laughs> Brilliant, <have> yeah. <laughs> so it, this is another project that is done completely for fun. Uh, as everyone knows, like at the, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, all the projects stopped. There was not much uh, commercial mm -hmm. work. And we thought like, let's, let's do something fun. Something that as well, I think it's something a client wouldn't ask for because mm -hmm. it's combining real life and 3D. And who knows, it might be that in the future, this, this will be a commercial project, so. Yeah, we always say that's always the way to get something new as your job offers is just to make mm -hmm. it yourself. Um, and then someone will see it and say, oh, hey, I want that. We yeah. even did this little simulation. This is done uh, with um, 3D tracking. So we, we tested moving the camera around and tracking the, the Carter in 3D to see how we would feel. I mean, we didn't have the time to animate the Carter, but uh, it's we think it looks very realistic when you move the camera around. It's the really good. The there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really good. So that's, that's something for the future. Next project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, oh, by the way, some of the some of the, uh, the community, by the way, are absolutely loving. Well, everybody's loving your work here, but the uh, inclusivity uh, has not been lost on a few people here who are very, including uh, Steve, who actually is disabled, uh, and it's it's gone down really well with him, Jane, a few others. So uh, Jane, in fact, saying it's so great to dis see disability uh, represented. She is chuffed to bits yes. it's just really good so it's fantastic there's a lot of people very appreciative of that and like i said everybody's loving your work it's just great really great thank you yeah so so like the christmas and, trees. And terms of like the, so so this actually this this google project this is yeah. um the first project that we we got commercial it was quite big uh this was for google for christmas uh christmas campaign where we made their that stickers <laughs> uh so this was super fun to make uh not our typical characters but it was a really nice lovely challenge uh that they gave us and this was like like how many like a few months into starting the studio yeah, yeah. it was funny as well because we'd really um were just refining our our typical characters and we felt really happy with the proportions and the style and we were 
defining them a lot and and Google came and said they wanted this and we were like oh amazing our characters Google this is going to go really well for us and they said oh but we don't want human characters um, and we were like oh no <laughs> so we had <laughs> so, to, so to make these completely new ones and actually talking about um, about inclusivity the reason that they didn't want to have human characters was that they wanted to be able to represent um, Christmas but for people all over the world because they're yep. already global market so you know how in the emojis you have many different skin tones many different yep. types of haircuts and facial hair and whatever you mm. want obviously you can't do that in 3d animations so it would yeah, take so a lifetime the so the solution was to make um little christmas objects which don't have any gender or race or age or anything which like is that. brilliant it's the it's a great that's i'm a big fan of cartoon work because for exactly mm -hmm. that reason you can get around everything all of those different things and make sure it's for everybody it's great i love yeah, that christmas that pudding by the way <laughs> 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 it's fantastic it's yeah. really good so so good <laughs> yeah it was a fun project to be fair and we had even more ideas than this that could have all happened yeah we next christmas 70 ideas or I think we love christmas June. so it was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> we really unironically love christmas and yeah. i think they didn't realize that when they came to us <laughs> we're like yeah. we're perfect for the job <laughs> brilliant really good no absolutely amazing so, so much to see so do you want us to talk about the physical piece we have in here Yes, I think it, bring that up. Could you bring that a little bit closer to the camera? Yeah, so every, that, that's yeah. it. Perfect. There we go. So that's on a, on a set of armatures at the back, right? So yeah, yeah. and there yeah. are inter, internal armatures as well. Yeah. 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 So everything as you is... can see, like everything is a metallic armature inside. Uh, I don't know, like many of the people watching this, like probably they have seen a bit of like how stop motion works, but uh, Basically, it's, yeah, it's a metallic armature, and then we use the technique called needle felting. So you get uh, a lot of, um, is it cotton? Is uh, it? It's it's a type of wool. Yeah, it's a type of wool. Oh yeah, and, like that little guy. <laughs> oh yeah, and you, you and you stab on it basically. Like yeah. you look a bit crazy doing it. You stab it in a million yeah. times, and then but it works very well, and it gets quite hard around the around the skeleton. So it's really good for doing a stop motion. Um, and then once it was done, we started experimenting. This was also done during uh, the quarantine, uh, because as we were saying, like we love experimenting and trying uh, different techniques. So this was a good opportunity as well, having the time. Yeah. We, the, our neighbors were worried because like our our blinds were down for days because we needed to have the lighting to to do the <laughs> to do to do the, the shooting. And they were like, "Why are you like hiding in your house?" And we were like, "No, no, no, we are doing a stop motion." <laughs> That's what's happening. Uh, but yeah, like we we do have like a uh, little shorts that we made, like super little animations we made with this. Uh, the first one or one of the first ones is where is the this? Walking cycle. This one is very fun. Yeah. This is one walking cycle. Uh, we're sharing it in our screen right now. If you are. Yep. So. Yes. Yeah. So as you can see, I'm at the bottom moving the character for each frame. Um, and using a program called Dragon Frame to capture the each frame on the camera. And then we put it all together uh, as we're going to show actually the process a little bit in After Effects to get the final yeah. results. Yeah, we wanted to show, um, like we use different programs. After Effects is, is a program we use sometimes to put everything together. Uh, like I was before starting Kameh Zapatata, I worked as a freelance motion designer for years. So After Effects is like everything for me. Like it's to a ridiculous level. Now I'm, I'm managing to get out of the program slowly, but before I would use it instead of Photoshop. I would use it all the time. <laughs> I, I had to write a piece of text that would go into After Effects. Sorry to jump in just a second. Could could I just ask you to show that small piece of footage again? Because unfortunately yeah. the, the screen share didn't work at the time. So Tim's just gonna oh, yeah. switch, there we go. Now yeah, everybody can see it. So okay. everybody's so excited to see it and they're going, I can't see it, I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Mm. Yeah. So, so yeah, on the lower part, we, we made this video in two halves. Like the lower part, you can see uh, Katie. This is like the course of like maybe three, four hours. Mm -hmm. So she was moving the carter one thing at a time. And then on the top part, you have the, the movement. Yeah. So as you can see, one of the problems you have when you are doing stop motion is that you are 
you can see the skeleton. You can see, not the skeleton, but the rig that is holding the character yeah. in the air. So you're going to need to use, in this case, After Effects to erase that. Uh, usually, in this case, we didn't do it, but people sometimes use green screens. So if you want to change the background. And then, as well, we use the program to enhance how the image looks, because there are little tricks that you can do. Another trick we did, and you cannot see now, but like we are, you're going to see later on, on After Effects, is that we, instead of making the eyes of the character in stop motion, we made the eyes uh, in After Effects afterwards. And that's because wow. it's a nightmare to move little eyes around the scene. And if you want the character to be looking somewhere else, it's basically everything you do in a stop motion is locked forever. You cannot change yeah. it afterwards. So yeah, it's saving us uh, mm. headaches. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, excited to see. So, yeah. And thank you for doing that for us because uh, people are loving that. Uh, saying so cool, uh, so fantastic. How many frames a second did you shoot that? At? 30 frames a second or? Uh, no, actually, this one, this is playing right now, I think, at 15, no? Is it 15. 15? I think it's 15. I think so, yeah. You can check in the yeah, project. That way you get that yeah, nice, can... slightly jumpy quality to yeah. it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and, and we. We have done a few more, like in, in the, as we were experimenting with this character, we thought it would be fun uh, because one of the things that like, everyone was doing during the quarantine was uh, trying to do a bit of sport at home because obviously we couldn't go out to the, to the streets, especially we were in Barcelona during quarantine and it was very strict. You couldn't go out at all. If you were in the UK, you could go for a run, but in Spain, up until like two months into the quarantine, you, you couldn't go out only for like doing shopping or something, okay. but you couldn't exercise. So we thought it would be fun if our character decided to exercise at home. Uh, so we made like some fun um, sports clothes for her. And there she is, here she is. Oh, we are. Can you turn it off here? Can I turn it off? Yeah. I think I can mute. Oh. Well, we don't hear it because you haven't got your computer audio through, so you're okay. Okay, perfect. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay, yeah. uh, we could hear it ourselves, yeah. like, really loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't, if, if, what we could hear is um, the beginning of an 80s music video. Yeah. So that, you, that was why it was a little bit off-putting. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, inspired by the sort of Jane Fonda workouts and that yeah. type of thing that I think we're yeah. getting a bit of a revival during the lockdown. At least yeah. here they were. <laughs> yeah, oh, some people have actually been watching that on Instagram simultaneously, so we know what the song is, actually. <laughs> so okay. Really and you can hear the little i'm doing some little sound effects as well um, yeah. for the effort that she's yeah. putting in of lifting yeah. those weights which are made of of tiny screws that we had at home yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it was yeah. everything was homemade like all the structure that you can see on this uh for for, for this all this stuff is made with uh strawberry boxes we bought a few <laughs> strawberries uh, like they were coming in these uh, wooden boxes and then we needed we didn't have uh, wood at home so we we cut them out and we painted them and then we introduced all these little lights and then we got this result of like it looks like these stages like a skate same from the 80s mm -hmm. so it's like super basic this is done like not having that many resources at home but like uh, having a lot of time which yeah. is <laughs> i love the amount of craft that you you put into this it's fantastic mm -hmm. really fantastic so do you want us to jump into after effects and let's have a look fun? yeah 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 whichever you're hum most comfortable with so that is great yeah, yeah. Course. So here you have the After Effects. This is one of the scenes. This is uh, um, the the Carter Greta is uh, doing this live waiting here. Like I'm loading the project right now. But uh, you have a few elements. So the camera is not moving. We have it static uh, because it helps a lot for doing a stop motion. Then After Effects allows us, for example, if we wanted to have like a slow zoom in or a little pan or something simple can be done afterwards and saves us a lot of problems. Here you have the animation. Actually, you can see it's at 24 frames per second, but it's in twos, so it would be yeah. at 12. Actually, that 12 yeah. was the, the frame rate. But yeah. then as well, if we are having a pan or a zoom in, we can do that at 24, so it looks a bit more fluid. Yeah. Uh, so here you have like the image, how it was in the end. And then I'm going to go through these layers uh, we're going to explain like what is each of these things, uh, uh, more or less. Just 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 to give an idea to, of people like to people of how After Effects can be used on this this type of stop motion. So uh, here you have like the 
sequence as it looked before applying all the effects and here you have how it looks afterwards. So a few things like the main one you can see is color correction but then also you can see this light has disappeared. Uh, the rig that you can see all this metallic rig there on the final version is not there and Just the lights eyes as well yeah mm -hmm. has eyes and then all these lights yeah or the we had as well the lights going on and off in that type of 80s music video style uh, yeah. because we thought we had tiny ones that you could take out and turn on and off but we thought that's so fiddly and if accidentally we, one of the pieces of stage falls off then we'd have to put it all back on and yeah it's a bit difficult yeah there's many things that are much easier uh, afterwards in after effects so here you have like the very first thing uh, that we did is having the animation sequence this is just imported as like a lot of photos so uh, simply the camera takes the photos and after effects imports it as an anime you import it as an animated sequence you select the frame rate and you're ready to go yeah. and then led lights Accidentally, we forgot to turn on these lights that we had on the front. Uh, and we realized after having an entire animation, so we thought like, okay, let's take another photo with them on and simply mask them and put them in front. And that saved us <laughs> like four hours of work. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. So here you have like the next thing. Yeah, the mask for the rig. So again, the same idea, um, but you have a photo without the character there so that you can yeah. Uh, make a mask of the wall without it in place and that's on so a track mat see. right yeah yeah so you can see yeah. here it yeah. separates you you can see it has a lot of keyframes and now you can see how it moves with the character yeah. so this is a tiny bit time consuming it means like you need to move the mask yeah but just like stop motion itself yeah. is time consuming everything is time consuming <laughs> yeah it's all about patience <laughs> if you like animation if anyone here is starting to study and they like animation they're gonna have to know in advance that it everything takes a lot yeah. of time. Yeah. yeah, actually, that's quite a common question that we get from students. They say, but how do you do it? It's so difficult and it takes so long. And you say, yeah, yeah, it takes long. <laughs> it's it does. difficult and it takes long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. no secret trick. Yeah. Um, so, but the rewards are great. <laughs> yeah, the rewards are great. And, and also, yeah. like, uh, when you get used to use the programs and you know the tools, uh, you can be thinking more about the craft than thinking mm -hmm. about the, the tools. And for example, things like masking and things like that, uh, because they are not really, uh, they don't consume a lot of your brain power. So you can be, let's say, listening to a podcast, listening to music at the same time you do it, or listening to an audiobook or something. So it's not the end of the world. Like you can yeah. be enjoying at home, like listening to an iPod podcast and then doing this. And sometimes I find it a bit like almost like um, kind of therapeutic. Yeah, yeah. therapeutic. <laughs> it's similar to be doing something manual. It's like you are like doing the task again and again. And, and, and your brain can kind of like relax a bit. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> then then we have another mask. For this, this shadow. It's for this little room. shadow there. And it moves a bit as well. So it's like trying to stop the shadow because if you see at this point, the shadow was quite obvious and we are like stopping the shadow there. You can still see the shadow here on the right. Uh, if, you, if you see like on the right part of the image, you can see the shadow going up and down. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. important. Like we think like those things are showing the stop motion uh, part of it and it's okay, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then all of these like layers, let's say of on uh, lights. So this is what Katie was mentioning. Like for example, here, if I activate the one on the left, every time this mask appears, you can see that the lights are turning on and off. So right. we have like a layer of like the light off that we move around, we move, 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 move around. So what we are doing with that when we activate them all is that we are having this animation on the lights that are changing as we move through the video. Yeah, which also takes a little bit long, but not nearly as long as if you were doing it. It would be in real life. life. Yeah. yeah. And then because we were doing an 80s video and everything needed to glow more, if we activate this glow mask, yeah. now the lights are now glowing. Now you get the more. Jane Fonda Eurovision yeah. style. Exactly. Yeah. Most of these things are around before you even existed on the planet. So it's just <laughs> it's amazing that I'm always amazed by the amount of 80s references these days that, you know. It's all on YouTube, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know, I mean, I'm glad because I can't remember the 80s too well, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm always, always impressed by the influences that particular decade made. And, and, and 
more so that people you know that young people are really grabbing it and it's it's mm. it's all over the place and that's really good it's mm. interesting it's true it's a kind of nostalgia for a time that you actually weren't alive for yeah mm. yeah it's in interesting <laughs> but that's, that's 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 no more different though for people who who are passionate about the roaring 20s and the yeah the, yeah the 50s, the 50s and all of, yeah 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 that whole um uh, I can't think of the word off the top of my head, but you know the whole retro thing. The um, mm. yeah, but yeah, how oh, cool! Yeah. And then we have here another two layers. You can see I left and I right. These are simply the two eyes. I'm going to zoom in here. Um, this is what we were talking about before. So we have these two layers that are the eyes. And actually, here, we made mm. the eyes um, taking a bit from the. Um, yeah. the weight that she's holding yeah. because it has a little bit of texture as you can see it's because it it's the rubber. rubber so we mask part of it and we did a transplant and we oh, moved clever. it to the, <laughs> yeah. to the yeah. eyes clever. yeah so I it like doesn't it. just look like a flat thing on top yeah. It's, yeah and then the eye is doing that it's moving but as i was saying before like it would be pretty simple let's say uh i could change the anchor points actually i haven't practiced this before but they should work if I wanted the eyes suddenly, they are looking quite front, but like if let's say I wanted them to look left, now only changing the anchor point of the eyes, mm -hmm. I can make them look left. It's not looking perfect, but uh, let me do a bit less. Um, but the subject is very forgiving, right? With with yeah. what you're doing here. So, yeah. yeah. And now they are looking left all the time. And because it changed the anchor point, it changed on every frame. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true that it's very forgiving. You don't need things to be as perfect as, let's say, 3D. So, yeah. Mm. And it's charming. That's that's what it is. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, vintage so was the word the I was looking for. But, yeah. <laughs> vintage, yeah. Uh, but now we have the card looking somewhere else. So, as you can see, like, this is super helpful and this type of video that saves us a lot of time. Um, and then the next thing, it would be this sharpen mask. So I use this quite a lot uh, when we're making photo, like photos of, in real life. Sometimes things are a bit out of uh, focus, or let's say that we want to accentuate a bit like the effect of the hair. So when you put the sharper mask, suddenly you're getting a bit more of that. Like, I don't know if like people can see it with the video compression, but you can see how suddenly the hair and yeah. everything becomes more obvious. Yeah, yeah no, and the texture in the shoes and it, yeah, 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 yeah. You're bringing it up. Like, I mean, you are doing something that is handmade and crafty, so you want to show. You want to show that like everything has is very tactile. And then the next thing is the vignette. Typical thing vignette. It like probably many people know about it. Is uh, basically you're making the edges of the image to go darker. Uh, traditionally, comes because uh, camera lenses produce that, that effect naturally. Yeah. But when we make things digitally, sometimes we want to imitate that effect. So you can see the vignette, and it helps a lot because it, it brings the attention to our mm -hmm. character. Yeah, almost as if she's in a in a TV set or something. Yeah. You're focusing on the instead of our living stage. room during quarantine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> our dining table. <laughs> yeah. And then, Sometimes we were like, should we leave everything up as it is um, <laughs> for tomorrow or should we go back to normal life? And sometimes we'd have to leave everything and not touch a single thing. Yeah, it's very so it's scary. Like, we'll just have yeah. dinner on the sofa. <laughs> yeah, with the slow motion, if you accidentally trip on the table or something and you move the things, then it's impossible to put them back to their original yeah, yeah. So it's better to start from the beginning. And you've got so, constant lights for this, right? So the lighting that you must have is constant. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. But actually at home, like now here we have like a more professional uh, set and, and we have professional lights, but like mm -hmm. at home it was a lot was done with like lamps we had at home mm -hmm. that we wouldn't move. But like it was way more like, like basic than, yeah. <laughs> than, than I feel like the final result shows. Because I think that with the final result, you, with all these things together, you cannot really tell that it was done you know, at home with mm -hmm. not that many tools. But um, maybe people can tell, like, obviously if you are working for Iron Man animation or, you know, making feature films, you can tell that this is basic. But uh, for us, it was like, we were very proud of it. <laughs> you know, are and you going to build any big town sets or anything like that? You know, the, yeah, with yeah. trapdoors and that's awesome. That's yeah, definitely yeah. the next, the next uh, step on this. And now, now in the studio, we have, a, we have an area dedicated to it, so it can stay there. And we're going to be able to, we're, we're um, getting a 3D printer as well, so we can 3D print some stuff. Yeah, as you were saying, this is something that we've been wanting to do for a long time. And we kind of took the quarantine as our moment to try it out. 
And so that's why she's called Greta. It's because she's Greta La Maqueta. Because she's like a maquette for future. Yeah, uh, it's the beginning. Future oh, cool. Projects. <laughs> oh, wow. And then um, here, the final layer I have here is uh, labels. So uh, labels are basically color correction, but you can see the difference between before and after. So mm. labels like can dramatically, color correction can dramatically change an image. Uh, here, uh, we go from an image that is quite green and quite soft uh, to something that I think looks more spectacular, is warmer, like a TV show would be. Uh, I think one of the things that this does very well is like is bringing all these lights that are being reflected on the table. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, they are shining much more. So yeah. we're getting an image that is more more spectacular, more more the look we wanted to have. And I think a lot of people, uh, when they are doing stop motion, they or, or, or things that you do in real life, they forget that you can do color correction to bring to bring things. Uh, you know, to make them more appealing and, and also yeah. giving them the look you want, like re referencing the type of image you want to make. You know, like we all, all these digital cameras we use now, they they make very good images, but they all look very similar. And if we apply a bit of color correction, we get that variation that people used to have in the past uh, when cameras would like tend to go more towards the red, towards the green, yep. uh, different color balance. Yeah, all of that. Yep. Uh, really, I mean, and that gives it character and personality, and that's they're very. It's a very warm piece of footage. I love this, and and it's that that's. I think when I when I look through a lot of your work, I find there's a lot of warmth in there in so many different ways, which is something that's really lovely. You know, uh, no, these are these are brilliant. So how long how long does this take then? From this using this particular one as an example, I know you did four hours in in actually the stop motion is that right i think you said four yeah. hours for yeah, that probably four hours per piece yeah yeah so maybe yeah three or yeah three or four hours for this yeah. um moving the character physically yeah. um and then and then the rest is fairly quick from there i mean making masks and everything um yeah. It's obviously not as painstaking as actually moving the character. Yeah, so. it's, it was done. The entire thing was done during the period of like around one to two weeks. Uh, the thing is that we always do a lot of things at the same time, so it's difficult to measure uh, times. Things things like usually when we are when we know what we want to do, they don't take as long. Uh, when we are a bit confused, so like let's say we're working with a client and the client doesn't really know what they want, things take forever can take like yeah, from, yeah. <laughs> like so long, like you can multiply a lot of time. So it's like, I think with time, we have learned, I think, to be a bit more um, forgiving with ourselves, like a bit more positive when we are doing personal projects. So instead of punishing us ourselves and wanting to do it perfect, we use the moment to be a bit more creative and fun, allow mistakes. And then when we are working with clients is when we try to be bit more perfect and, right. and direct so yeah i think i think it's like it's difficult to say but like, let's say one to two weeks yeah <laughs> yeah okay and so with, with the uh, with the other things that you're doing the other projects i mean this one i is is a pretty straightforward um shot really in that it's in one position for the whole thing so but the other things you're you're working on there are they storyboarded through so do you do you storyboard relentlessly or is it just a handful of, of yeah it of... depends a lot on on the project that we're doing um mm. if we have a look at something yeah so we're sharing us it again kind of our, should we go to our website we can yeah. show a bit yeah. of the tim will just uh, get that across we, onto the we can should we talk about spotify because it has a lot of animation yeah um, yeah so so yeah like um it all depends i think on the size of the project we usually yeah are quite organized before starting. Mm. Yeah, this one, for example, um, this is sound off yep. now. I could just have it playing a little bit in the background. I hope that doesn't lag for anyone. Um, so this project, this is an edit of a series of 12 videos that we made um, for the Spotify's premium campaign last year. And this was, as you can see, a, a huge amount of work, actually. Um, we had a series of animators working with us. Um, and then, so for this project, as it was 12 videos, it was pretty loose though. Things weren't really storyboarded out in the same way because the videos were 12 seconds long. And the idea was that each one represents a feeling that you feel when you listen to music. Um, 
So it was kind of open to to interpretation, both by us and the client. They had some ideas, we had some ideas, the animators had some ideas. And yeah, the, the, the main thing I think uh, we we make sure like before getting into animation is to make sure like the look and feel of our how the project is gonna look is is fixed. The good thing is like because we uh, both can create the characters and we can make them look like having the final look. We usually we show that to the client at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit different to how it would work with another type of studio, uh, in which at the beginning the client sees something that uh, is really in a sketch form, very very yeah. basic. Uh, we we can produce things that are quite realistic relatively quickly. So with this project, the first thing we made like are, for example, here would be these images. So before having uh, this animation, so if this is uh, one of the first videos we made, this is uh, optimistic. Yeah. So this is like the feeling you get when you are listening to music, let's say you're going to work or you're going to the supermarket and you're listening to music and you're feeling like super happy. So this character is like encountering a lot of like um, obstacles through the, this imaginary city, but it's still super happy about it. So the first thing we made with the client, uh, this is like the first image we made. So it's like a super quick sketch. This that was done in the first day, just just to get a feeling of like what what the idea was, uh, and and then. The, the first thing we made like was creating these images. Uh, probably this, they changed a bit during the process, but like let's say that after one week we were already working with these images. So the the color palette was completely fixed. The clothes of the character, how they they, they felt like that was all fixed, and the client could. We always like to say that like when you give a good image mm. to a client, they can imagine the animation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean we. Have, before we'd even really done any animation, we were getting a lot of uh, project offers for large animation projects. And we yeah. thought, but don't you want to see any examples? And I think people can just imagine it moving already. When you see this right. character jumping in the air, you kind of think it's you've seen it jump. Yeah. Um, yeah. But with this, um, yeah, with the, with this idea as well of working uh, with a very finished image already, but, so we always try and do that before starting any animation, because then if you change your mind after the animation and the clothing simulation is done, it's like you've just wasted a week. Yeah, yeah. Work. it's super time consuming. Mm -hmm. Once you have the animation done, all the parts of like the, the simulations and the rendering is so time consuming. Uh, I mean, things are getting faster and faster and faster. Uh, and luckily, render engines and computers are getting faster. Uh, but it's still, it's really something that a lot of times you need to leave during the night. So then you arrive in the morning and you forgot to activate some little switch. So everything is broken. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. So it's not a fun thing. It's not yeah, like, no. I, <laughs> it's like, so, so that's why I was saying at the very beginning of this talk, like we like that we do a lot of still uh, images because I think a lot of times we even try to convince people uh, and clients to say like, if you have a small budget and, and you don't have a lot of time, why to spend so much time trying to make an animation when you can make an image that can allow people to imagine how the character mm. would move. So you don't always need to be making a, an animation. And I, I think that's interesting to, to tell to people because I think sometimes we convince them mm. that that's the yeah. best option. Yeah, huh? but um, yeah, but well with this one. Is that a bit of trap code in there, by the way, that or is that actual? How did you do this? The jets Ooh. from the shoes. <laughs> so this is when like I saw it at first, I thought it was a bit of track code particular no, from Red Giant. It, no, it's it's not. Uh, so the, this was made combining. So there's a, a smoke uh, simulation thing on on cinema. It's called Turbulence uh, yeah. that you can make. And then we made uh, little particles with the inside cinema like, with the yeah. particles engine. Nothing. Yeah. We didn't even use X particles or anything. But we made like little animations of them, and they were coming off the shoes. And then we made them all like to to emit light. And the pretty thing I can assume in there is kind of like they interact a bit with the smoke, so you can see all this. Yeah. Uh, really burned feeling you're getting through the smoke mm. from the from the light. Uh, it was really fun to make. It was a bit crazy. Like uh, this was like suggested by the client. They said like, oh, we want like the shoes to be like uh, rockets and to get lights emitting mm. from them. We're like, okay, <laughs> what does <laughs> yeah. that mean? Yeah. But I, th I think it turned out like uh, really well. And this is really, really like, this, this represents that feeling of like, when you listen to your favorite song and suddenly you like, 
skyrocket. Yeah. You, you you fly in the moment. Is that like a really extreme feeling you can get from a song? Mm. Uh, so so we think like it portrays it very well. This was animated by Pablo as well. He yeah. really got that energy. Yeah. And then the cars and is flying there and has the smoke and the particles coming off the mm. the shoes. Uh, and as you can see, like another thing, like that is difficult to see on the project. Uh, we spend a lot of time, and then you you don't see that much. But uh, we wanted to make the clothes themselves to be animated. So each of the patterns that the cards are wearing are themselves animated in fun ways that represent a bit what the video is about. Uh, as I'm saying, like the videos are so fast and everything moves so quickly that sometimes it's difficult to see. But we have some fun animations around here. For yeah. example, this one. Um, so this is simply the pattern that is, uh, is the it on this one? Uh, the one above, ah, okay, this character that is dancing yeah. has that pattern. I think you can maybe see it, uh, but I think it's like one of, is this one of these things in which uh, us, like we put so much oh, yeah, time I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those yeah. patterns, but it's difficult to see. Yeah. But we use them at the very end when you see the Spotify premium as well, you can see how there are patterns animated there. So, yeah, yeah I, I guess like, you know, like uh, this can be an example of like when you put a lot of effort on something that then is not noticeable, but yeah. then some people, when they see it, they really like it, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went a bit crazy with this project. We really put absolutely everything into it. Um, so, and some, some, yeah, some of it didn't really. Yeah, this is uh, more patterns. Out. And these are like more drawings at the very beginning. You can see like really early on, like playing with this, um, idea of like the cards are a bit like the color of the feeling they are representing. So these cards will be more relaxed, uh, like that's like that feeling of like when you listen to music to to feel like you're gonna float. So the cards yeah. are relaxing in the clouds. So we, we, we thought like blue would be more of the color. The feeling before this is like a Carter, like, like feeling like a rock star when you listen to music. So then you get that glow inside your mm -hmm. body. Uh, this was another like crazy idea and quite difficult to make, but uh, we think it's like so much fun to make a character like it's glowing mm. itself from the music. Yeah, I think we've yeah. all felt like that. Yeah. You know, in the ch in the chat, uh, Caroline is saying that. Uh, they really do portray happiness. So it's great that they're coming across. Uh, Sandrine is saying that she loves the details on the fabric. Uh, Diego is saying, <laughs> what a delight. I love how you guys have integrated motion graphics on their clothes. Catherine is saying there's a great synergy with the backgrounds and the characters. So yeah, everybody's oh, love it. And, and I am. People are appreciating the fabrics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so you say this, these are, so these are cloth simulations that, that we've got on yeah, here so, right so so we have the um we give the the um the rigged character we give to the animators and the yeah. that character doesn't have any clothes on so the animators will animate that that character so you'll just have the, the very naked moving. character completely naked yeah. yeah usually we send it in like black and white to the clients so they don't get because sometimes like when you get this green yeah, naked it can look a bit creepy, <laughs> it <will be> creepy. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we send a black and white version to the client and they approve the animation and then we go into yeah and mode. we say this is it if you, like the animation is locked from here because then to put clothes simulation on this crazy animation is just a complete mess so <laughs> yeah. so nothing's changing from from that point um which you have to have a little leap of imagination i think to see the black and white um clothingless character and imagine how it's going to look with all of this on top um but the client was actually really cool in this project so some people have asked like uh, about the clothes simulation actually how we do it so because it looks it, it, it looks like it just works, but actually each of these videos have mm. like so many masks inside After Effects to cover mistakes because mm. the clothes are all the time crossing with the bodies and are yeah. doing weird stuff. So yeah, the program is not at all made for this yeah. um, right. that simulates the clothing as marvelous designer. So you have to really be take your time and. But again, like, mask, masking it, making yeah. masks like there is nothing. I, I think like, what the first job I had ever in London, someone told me like uh, something in the lines of like, look, if it looks good, 
if it looks fine, it doesn't matter how you got there. Like yeah. if you need to make a million masks and you hide it, it's fine. Yeah. Don't we are not making real objects. We are making an image. Mm -hmm. And I think obviously don't do that from the very beginning of the project because if you accumulate a lot of mistakes, then it's very <laughs> difficult to continue. But when you're reaching the goal, when you're reaching the end and you have a little mistake and you get corrected quickly with After Effects or with Photoshop, just just do it. Yeah. yeah, everyone's doing it. <laughs> it's great. Uh, totally rocking out to some flugel on that uh, that chat there. I think <laughs> so, it's so brilliant. I love it. What a great project. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a huge project here actually. When you see everything laid out like this. Oh yeah. Yeah, like it's a long, long, long. As you can see, like w one thing we do uh, as well is like. As we are working on a project, we are already building, as I was saying before, this is completely synced with our Behance projects, but uh, mm -hmm. we we build the project on Behance as we are making it. So uh, it, it's we do it because it's uh, a lot of times when you finish a project, you're so tired that you don't feel like going through all the images and the work in progress and everything and putting it all together. Uh, but if you do it as you are making the project, it's much mm. more enjoyable. So sometimes like we are making, let's say, like um, a work in progress render. And I say to Katie, wow, this looks so cool. Mm. And she says, OK, let's put it on Behance. And we are building it because we are, you can build it like in a hidden way. You don't need to publish it until yeah. the end. Uh, so we, we do that a lot. Mm. Yeah, it definitely saves a lot of time. And in 3D as well, quite a lot of things do look nice on the way. Um, you can have a lot of clay renders and things, and you can put the put the patterns on as well, like this. Um, yeah, with in this project we didn't put clay renders, but in no, other projects, I think just because like, it was so massive already. Yeah, there was so many <laughs> things. Yeah, it's gigantic. I mean, this yeah, must have been a long project, right? This must have. This was like it, it was done relatively quickly. Like it was probably from the beginning to the six, end was a couple of months. Yeah, six weeks, yeah. two months. Uh, but um, look, we had a. a big team for doing animation. So, uh, and I think it was it was the first time for us. I mean, we had had people helping us in the past, but it was the first time we properly expanded the team uh, to to be able to handle so much animation. And it was amazing. Yeah. We really enjoyed it. Was super fun. And it's uh, some people uh, were working uh, with us uh, in, in the office. Some people were like working remotely. And it was all done coordinating all of that. And I mean, and, and the entire project could have been done remotely, which uh, it's one of the cool things about how we work nowadays with everything on the cloud and everything synced. The people are organized, everything can be done remotely. So yeah, yeah. it was a very fun one. And then mm -hmm. I, I have like before, like uh, I was thinking about like in contrast to this massive project, we have another project we did recently. I think it's quite fun, Tiny Worlds. Uh, mm -hmm. That is like, again, another, it came as a, a charity uh, here in Barcelona um, that uh, supports people that don't have like legal papers to stay in Europe. And they, they support them. They, they were having actually a lot of problems because a lot of people that had to quarantine during that time without having a, a legal uh, papers in, in Europe, they were having problems to go to the hospital. They were not sure if actually they could go to the hospital if they were feeling ill. So they contacted us uh, about this campaign they were making and, um, and we were happy to make this, this image. And we wanted to make this image representing, they told us like a representing home. Mm. So, so we made this this image. I think we have the animation. Oh, it's not here. The animation. We have like little anima little parts of the animation. But this is this card that is arriving to a house, and and they are like uh, it's being welcomed. Uh, they have the image, and this this image was made as well. Like when we made it, we thought like, wow, there's a lot of like interesting stuff that we have made in here mm -hmm. that could be used to make an entire project. So I love the treatment started. of that smoke. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is the smoke. Yeah, we are. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's inspired. Like I, I think we had seen before this that something similar made in two D, and mm. sometimes it's fun to translate to imagine how everything would translate. Into yeah, 3D. it's a bit comic booky or something. Yeah, I mean it's a dashed line essentially, right? That's just yeah. moving yeah. through the yeah. 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 Moving through it. Yeah. So, That's lovely. Yeah. So this actually, this is something that we would really like to make in, in physically real life, in real yeah. life as well. When we have the three D printer, maybe because you can kind of imagine how it would be already. 
Um, but following on from from that initial one that that we made for the charity, then we decided to make a whole project out of it. So we made another world here, following again the the theme of home and safety and and yeah. comfort. We and then I think it was towards the end we were already finishing the project, and I think maybe you mentioned or someone mentioned, oh, these look a bit like those little. Um, yeah. Snow, snow globes. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so we thought like, oh, what, a, what if we put like a little uh, a glass, <laughs> yeah. a glass dome on them? Yeah. yeah. To completely encase the little world as it is. So this was done uh, completely as an afterthought, but uh, and yeah. we put the image, those images uh, at the end of the project. This was completely, uh, you know, a project that was done for for fun and I mean to support that charity but then these actually these images were the ones that were shared the most like yeah. they've, they've been appearing on many places and people uh, love how those domes were working mm -hmm. and I think as well this is like when what Katie was saying like this one we thought like okay with the 3d printer we can start printing all of these things and then make these domes ourselves in real life so that's our challenge now yeah. wow that's gonna be amazing um, Catherine is asking have you ever seen uh, Friedensreich Hundertwasser uh, uh, houses. Have you ever seen those? Oh, no. No, no, I don't know. So, Friedensreich Hundertwasser. <laughs> we'll we'll do Yeah. I, I don't know. Like well, that's, that's, our home, that's everybody's homework now. We'll have to go and look well, that up. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm so, intrigued. No. They're real life houses. And I houses. think Tim, normally being the encyclopedic person that he is, he will probably find a link for us, drop it into the chat, and that would be just. Fantastic. I hope so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, so we have um, we have three or four minutes left. Um, is there any is there anything else you want to show us in that time? I think you're going to have to come back again, you know, and show us <laughs> show us much more stuff because this is really love really it. enchanting. I love it. Yeah, really love it. Um, let's see if we've got any questions uh, inside here. So actually, you're, you're summing up what Caroline was feeling during lockdown. She felt like she was in a globe. Uh, that whole time so yeah i think yeah. we all did <laughs> what, I, I, what what is the sort of render time on these images from from when you do it or is that oh so it wasn't that much like uh probably it was like they were taking like uh 10 minutes to render but then when you put the glass dome they take forever because yeah. it like deforms all the light mm -hmm. uh so it's not a very big difference in the image but you can see actually you can see it very clearly on this one on the edges you can see how the light is getting completely yeah. deformed yeah. so that's taking forever uh yeah. but i think it's like that's one of these like i don't really know how long it took i guess we put it on and we went to have lunch and then it was ready yeah. so depending on how long lunch yeah. took <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but not crazy long. We never no. have um, huge, huge files like a lot of people. No, we, like we try to keep things quite like simple on the amount of like we usually put up one or two lights on the scene because of that. We don't like super long render times. Uh, so Yeah, it's almost a bit like a challenge, I think, to, to try and make the the um, file sizes smaller and, yeah. and be a bit more efficient like that. And we usually use textures that don't have crazy resolutions. We usually try to keep things, compared to like nice. many people that try to make as much resolution as, as bigger files as possible, we, we like having things really keeping them small. Because sometimes as well, we work with a laptop. Uh, we have this laptop that uh, has like a decent graphics card in it. Yeah. and and we carry it with us and sometimes yeah. we are when we are on holidays or or we are traveling around we render on that it gets super hot uh but it works yeah you just need to put <laughs> it in another room overnight because it's super noisy <laughs> it's cool now. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. oh dear right okay yeah. uh, by the way tim has, has conjured uh, has managed to find uh, some results for us on uh freedom strike Kunterfasse. it was actually his real name uh was friedrich Stovasser. And he was an Austrian-born New Zealand visual artist and architect who worked in the field of environmental protection. So there you go. That's where oh, that's come from. Oh, we'll definitely um, look that up. After. And a few people saying that this looks like these look like 2020. These images are <laughs> 2020, which is fantastic. <laughs> So, well, we're just about a minute to go. So what I ought to do as well, as in, in, in addition to thanking you so much for spending this hour with us and sharing so much great work uh, with us, is to remind everybody that we are here every weekday between 12 and 1 on Adobe Live, and also that we have our own Discord. So it doesn't have to end here in just a few seconds. You can carry on chatting 
over on Discord. Tim's popped that into the chat for us. So join us there. People chat throughout the day and the night on that. So that's fantastic. Uh, the uh, schedule for the rest of the week is popping up, and for next week rather, is popping up on the screen for you now. So you can see uh, all of that. Actually, no, that's this week, I think, because it's me on Friday, uh, which is Tim as in nicely called Tony Harmer's Tony Harmer Show with Tony Harmer, which is kind of funny. Um, there you go. <laughs> Brilliant. But uh, Katie and Abel, thank you so much for uh, for joining us again. It's been great to have you here. Hopefully, We'll have you back at some time in the not too distant future. Yeah, oh, I would love so. to. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Great talking. Oh, great stuff. Take care, everybody. Mind how you go. Bye. Stay creative. Bye.